Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the broadcast today. We're talking politics, especially Georgia, with Fred Locken, Professor of Political Science at TMCC. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Fred Locken. He is professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College. Pleasure to have you back, sir. Thank you, Sam. We're taping this the morning after we got the results from Georgia. Ooh, the morning after. Okay. The morning <laughs> after. Um, I, I was emailing late last night with a, a media buyer um, uh, who's been buying in Georgia, and I said, at last you can take a breath. And uh, that was his response was, yes, I'm finally breathing. Um, because it has been insane, the amount of money that has poured into that state. It's crazy. Well, in, in the 2020 runoff, it was almost $300 million spent in that, that special election alone, not even the race up to that. And we're talking about $200 million in the, the mass election race here in Nevada this year. So these dollar figures, uh, actually 17 billion spent overall on all elections in the United States prior to the Georgia runoff. These are so record-breaking, they're insane. Um, somebody at uh, one of the universities uh, in the communications department was saying that um, the amount of money that's poured in, especially at the end, is actually counterproductive. It's not an efficient spending of the money. And as somebody in the marketing world, I would have to agree. And I, I mean, I'm happy to take the money, but at the same time, it really doesn't make sense. Well, you're trying to throw at the wall and make something stick. Uh, it's sometimes driven by desperation. If, you're, if your quiet polling numbers are suggesting it's a lot closer than you thought it was gonna be. Uh, there are a lot of motivations, and frankly, they have the money to spend. That's the problem. Uh, if they didn't have quite so much, they'd probably be far more strategic in the way that they deal with it. And I don't know that it. Uh, I don't know that all of the advertising that's negative, starting from the beginning, is all that productive anymore either. But voters are going to have to really send a strong message before these campaigns change these habits, because what they see is that they do work. But barely. I mean, when you look at, you know, the, the final totals, it's not like somebody has a massive win and somebody has a massive loss. In a lot of these cases, it's very close. And we saw that here in Nevada, too. Well, there's obviously a tipping point. I mean, if we approached it scientifically, we would know where the, you know, the cost-benefit analysis uh, uh, is supreme. But again, too much money coming in and a fear of losing. But we have to, if, if we dial back on a Senate race, which is for a seat that's just under $200,000 a year, uh, the investment that you have to put into winning that seat uh, is, is just so off the rails. It, it's ruining the decision by the Supreme Court that sort of opened this door to a freedom of speech on, on uh, campaign 
uh, spending and contributions has, has ruined our election system. Well, I, I don't think it was in great shape. I mean, you know, finan from a financial point of view, I don't think it was in great shape prior to that either. Uh, this just allowed uh, for much more ability for uh, campaigns to be able to spend money, whether it be corporations or unions, which a lot of times people forget. Um, is that, that unions have an unlimited amount of money to be able to spend as well if they choose to do so. Well, and just the various PACs on, on either side of the ledger. I mean, it's remarkable how much money people are willing to contribute to campaign spending now. That, that's the other thing that's really shifted. And Nevada, Nevada stands out as one of the states that generates a lot of revenue for campaigns. Uh, yes, it does. And television stations are staying in business because of the <laughs> amount of revenue they see every other year. Um, one of the things that I, I've been thinking about a lot lately is the difference between uh, campaigning and marketing. Um, it, it seems that campaigns have devolved into I hate you, I hate you, I hate you from either side and poking each other like little children. Um, and it's also nasty. Uh, whereas marketing is more a subject of, you know, um, selling somebody a, a, either a product that they need or a product that you make them desire. Um, should campaigns be changing the way that they market, um, or actually market rather than campaigning, so that they're getting a positive message across? Because isn't that why we're seeing so many people leaving Republican and Democratic parties and becoming independents? Because they're tired of all this. Well, it was Richard Nixon that was the first candidate in the 1960s to, to turn to Madison Avenue and say, hey, how do you sell this product? And we've really taken it to an extreme. But you know, when I talk to individual voters, they cling to the very few messages that are sent out that are substantive, that tell me something about the candidate or tell me what this candidate has accomplished or, or really seeks to uh, accomplish. If you look at the Nevada races, it was so lacking in that kind of detail uh, for challengers without the experience, not even indicating what their agenda might be, uh, not doing interviews with the press, avoiding the whole process of debates. Uh, it is such a managed environment. Uh, I think it, uh, that voters are getting very tired of it. And I think the nonpartisan revolution is going to shake the two-party system very dramatically, very shortly. And possibly that will be one of the side benefits is that we might come back to some level of common sense in campaigning, of actually giving candidates what, uh, or giving voters what they need to know about these candidates. When um, you look at the research on uh, social media like Facebook and Twitter, um, is that really driving the voter? Um, because, you know, the, the, the numbers are not as, you know, we've seen this with Elon Musk buying Twitter, that the numbers of people are really not that great who are utilizing this service in kind of the same way that uh, people that watch Fox News or MSNBC, they're not 100 million people. It's, you know, two, three, four million people at the most, and then dropping down in some cases to CNN like a half a million people. It's not the whole country that's paying attention to these things. It's very true. Everything about American politics is now conducted in such a distortion chamber. Uh, and it depends on age, really, for uh, someone under 30, social media is probably the only source of information. But statistics suggest that on a given day, only 25 million Americans regularly listen to the news or try to catch some sort of aspect of the news. Most Americans are completely disconnected from it. And other studies have indicated that the average voter doesn't make their decision about voting until about seven to ten days, even if they're going to vote, much less who they're going to vote for, seven to ten days before the actual election date. So with all of those factors involved, I, I, I can understand the challenges of a campaign, but I think we all hunker for a period of time when, when we'll come back to some semblance of, of common sense and better practices. We, we Good need luck reforms. with that, by the way. We need reforms <laughs> up and down, though. I mean, our campaigns are far too long. We put far too much money into them. We've allowed them to be incredibly superficial. And they're driven by the media. The media loves to distort because it's not in the business of edifying us. It's in the business of selling soap. You're the anomaly in this world, but in this echo chamber that we live in, all of it is basically designed to raise their revenues, not to necessarily benefit the, the, the republic. And that model has to change. Uh, some people who are close to me um, will, will uh, smile with you saying that uh, because I, I make the point a lot of times with these cable news networks um, that they exist not for the content but for the commercials that go between the content. Uh, because that's where the revenue is made, and if they weren't making money doing it, they wouldn't do it. Well, and, and good news and, and normalcy doesn't really sell 
uh, and doesn't generate them the revenue. So the IRI is trying to hype it up. Poll data. I don't know why anybody reports any poll data. Not only do they struggle in uh, producing accurate information, but now campaigns are able to order, or, or political action committees or others are able to order the results they want, right? And so as long as they're willing to pay for it, a number of these companies will produce a distorted result that feeds a, a narrative that they want, either on social media or whatever. That's not how to conduct. I mean, but our democracy requires rational thinking. It requires an edified uh, populace. And it, it requires a media that is doing its job as the fourth estate. And we're really in trouble on all three. OK, so, so the media is still trying to figure out how to survive uh, with few exceptions. I mean, the bigger papers um, have figured out, you know, the LA Times, the New York Times, the uh, Washington Post, um, the Wall Street Journal, especially because they were the ones that uh, uh, monetized uh, the internet so quickly. And if you want to get a subscription, unless you're getting a deal, you're, you're going to pay a substantial amount of money for a quality paper. Um, but most local papers are struggling. Um, most are, are begging for money, uh, donations. Why, why and when did news become a charity? It shouldn't be a charity, it should be a business. Well, we're raising generations that have a focus away from politics and on everything else. Uh, so politics is generally not a priority in the body politic uh, as it should be. Uh, and then we have such a negative view. We're raised literally from the cradle with a negative view of government. Uh, in, in the history of the United States, people like Jefferson wanted a healthy distrust of government, but they didn't want you to hate it. Uh, we have crossed over, and so, it, it, so many people just won't watch the news, either because it depresses them. Uh, they're so slanted and biased, they only will listen to their particular slant of the news. None of this feeds the benefits of the, of the, um, of the republic. But I think it also, the distortions in such people get kind of tired of it, and they just we're at Cir Circus Maximus at, at our stage of evolution as an empire, and we're far more interested in the en entertainment than the substance. Well, I, I, that, that brings up an interesting point, which is I think that um, whatever vehicle you're using, uh, broadcast, uh, radio, TV, podcasts, newspapers, uh, there has to be an entertainment value to it. Um, it just depends on what you're using in terms of entertainment. Um, you know, if this program were boring and dull, and some of our programs are boring and dull, people are not going to watch or listen to those particular programs. You hope that overall they like the tone of the program, they like the information they get, and so hopefully they're going to pay attention to the majority of them. Um, you're, you're, you're seeing uh, people like Joe Rogan with his $100 million Spotify contract uh, getting people to listen to three, three and a half hours mm -hmm. of interviews. Uh, you're probably listening to it over a couple of days period. Um, but it's entertaining. It's, it's also informative, but it's entertaining. I think all the mediums have to be entertaining. Um, you know, the, the dislike of politics, you know, uh, we were recently at the Colosseum in Rome on a tour, and they were talking about how the Colosseum in its heyday was there free of charge to the citizens because the, uh, you know, the emperor wanted to have the citizens happy that they were being given something for free because they were paying a lot of taxes on the other side, but depending on what your stature was, if you were a senator, you were at the lower levels where the emperor was, and the higher up you could end up being with the slaves, but it was all free. And there were hundreds of days a year of entertainment, and very expensive entertainment. You know, none of this is new. No, I, I, we get into these loops with our civilizations. I would say that we have an obligation in news to be engaging not necessarily entertaining. And I think that's uh, maybe a, a misnomer. Uh, that, that's what's happened. I mean, entertainment divisions now are running news organizations. but And have been for a very long time, by the way. Good Morning America became yep. under the entertainment division of ABC many, many moons ago. Yeah, and there's not much news as a result. You know, for, for news junkies, uh, first, you don't find news on cable news very often. Most of those are personality programs with incredible slants one way or the other. In fact, I encourage my students to read sources from outside the United States, uh, Canadian, British sources, that sort of thing. And I've advocated that uh, I think a solution in the United States would be a government-owned channel like BBC. No. Yes. No. Let's argue. No, it has to be independent. 
has well, to be independent because otherwise it, it goes down the drain immediately by, by the mere fact that the government has control over it. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That, that I, but, but here, I would here, beg to disagree. I think that no, that's fine. We can in disagree. our country, we, we, I'd like to find the drain. Uh, we, we are so through the drain and on the other side. Uh, to pull American media back, I think we have to break this corporate hold on it. And breaking the corporate hold will only be accomplished. You can't regulate it out. You've got a free speech, so you've got to get a competition that drives the rest of the media to behave more. And that's the government uh, solution. No, competition. Back in the 1800s, well, it would be competition. <laughs> in, in, in the 1800s, in Eureka, Nevada, there was an election. Right before the election, there were five newspapers in town. The town was about 40,000 people at that point. Not that big anymore. <laughs> um, right the day after the election, all the newspapers went away. They all had a different candidate they were supporting. Let's take a break. We'll come back after this time out. Ring in the holidays with $350,000 big holiday extravaganza at Carson Valley Inn. Over 1,000 winners. Weekly cash, free play, and up to 10K in cash every Saturday. And two grand prize drawings. Win up to 20000 in cash. It's the season for winning big at the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. With Nevada's only transplant center and verified burn center, the science is here. With award-winning cardiologist and the state's only dedicated heart failure clinic, the talent is here. With Nevada's most advanced robotic surgery, the technology is here. And with the Silver State's only designated pediatric trauma center, hope is here. All because we are here. UMC. Oh, what fun it is to win during the $100,000 Christmas giveaways at Timura Casino. Up to $17,000 in cash and free play giveaways each week. And over $20,000 in giveaways on New Year's Eve, including up to ten dollars in cash. Your good times are at Timura Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Fred Locken, professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College. Um, so one last thing on, on that part, portion of the media. Um, so, uh, several years ago during the 2008 recession, I was on a, 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 the uh, NPR station in Vegas with a bunch of other, uh, I, I'm not a journalist, but they were, they were a bunch of other journalists. And, um, and I was talking, you know, everybody was so depressed about what was going on and how, things, how bad things were. And I said, the job of media is not normally to report on all the airlines or, or airplanes landing safely every day. I said, but at a time when everybody is so freaked out about everything and so depressed about everything, maybe we need to tell some of the positive stories that are happening. I got lambasted by everybody else on the panel, but I still feel that, that there are a lot of positive things that happen in communities, and if you want to build an audience, you can't just tell them about all the horrible things that happen. You have to be a reflection of the community that people live in. Well, I think you were a visionary in the sense that in many of the, of the news settings, you do s at least have a segment of a, of a favorite viral video or, or something that someone did something really good for somebody else. And those are hard What about, about a new business that comes in and is going to yeah. create tons of jobs yeah. and uh, is high tech? And, you know, it's, it, it, those stories are pushed to the side. I, I asked a, um, a newspaper editor one time, I said, why is it that you have a business section with one page and half of it is ads and then you have a sports section that's 10 pages and there are no ads in there? It doesn't make financial sense. It makes readership sense. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, but it doesn't help if you can't pay for the paper <laughs> exactly. and that's where we are today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jackie Rosen. 
I, I mean, let's let's not wait 2024. Let's, let's pivot, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, they are already right sending out fundraising letters yeah. uh, in co uh, coordination with the Georgia campaigns that uh, if you donate to this certain thing, uh, that half will go to the candidate in Georgia and half will go to, toward Jackie Rosen. Um, who's going to be the opposition to Jackie Rosen? Who are the who are the players on the field at this point? Do you see? A very good question. Well, I think you start. Well, thank you. <laughs> As I would expect, <laughs> right? Very good. Uh, and I agree. Actually, there have been compliments, which you really are surprised to hear, of, of the Democratic Party and how it has gotten its campaign machine together in this country. And uh, even during our race in Nevada, you are seeing mailers from other campaigns across the country. If you were spending for this candidate, you certainly need to help this candidate over here. That Because of the volume of money that they raise, I mean, they've developed a really good national strategy. So not surprised about the Rosen mailings. But the obvious person that we, you would first think of would be uh, Adam Laxalt. And he had a chance to continue his role as an election denier, but I think he took the road of, of acknowledging his defeat to live to fight another day. So there's a possibility that, I mean, they have to be reassessing. They've not been successful in a number of these runs, but that is a Senate seat. That is her first reelection. And so I would think that he would be the, maybe the name leading the pack. And for the, the Republicans, it's assessing the impact of this election, because obviously election denier and attacks on the democracy didn't work so well for the Republican candidates. Trump endorsements seem to be leaving the universe of, of Republican Party. Except in governor's race. Exactly, and, uh, but was played softly, right? Right, And right. played with great distance, which I think you know, showed a lot of acumen. Uh, and, and I think the selection of Ben Kiefer suggests, uh, you know, even though uh, Lombardo is not familiar with state politics at that level, he certainly is reaching out to people that are. That's a good sign. But I think that that is going to really drive the candidates that come forward. It could be a very ugly primary for the Republicans, though, in 2020. Okay, but I mean, you've only named one name here, and yeah. that's somebody who's already lost statewide twice. Um, you know, the, the Danny Tarkanian theory here. Um, yeah. Sorry, Danny. I love Danny. <laughs> um, you know, the uh, um, you know, is there no other name that jumps out at you that says? Not that's going to. It, it obviously we always assume it's going to come from Clark County these days uh, for the Republican Party. But uh, the Republican Party has to reassess the party it's going to be in the state of Nevada going forward based on the results of this election. Uh, it has internal difficulties that have it distracted and fragmented, in my view. And that's why I think there, uh, there's not an obvious. Beyond that, they haven't had, other than the Secretary of State, they didn't have any constitutional offices. Now they have the controller. <laughs> and they have, uh, which the, the one election that didn't make any sense to me. That was the one I didn't call. And the le Lieutenant Governor. Uh, well, and, and, and the, that team, but they're, they certainly are, are too close to their first elections to be talking about anything like a run in, in 2000. Okay, uh, we gotta take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Ring in the holidays with $350,000 big holiday extravaganza at Carson Valley Inn. Over 1,000 winners. Weekly cash, free play, and up to 10K in cash every Saturday. And two grand prize drawings. Win up to 20000 in cash. Tis the season for winning big at the Carson Valley Inn. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley. From Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. Save money and take transit. 
Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Fred Locken, professor of political science at Truckee Meadows Community College. So, going back to the Jackie Rosen race, is there a primary on the Democratic side? You have somebody who um, was in Congress for one session, has now been uh, in the Senate for one session. Does Dina Titus, uh, having been redistricted into a district that she won handily but wasn't happy about, does she decide that she's going to take a shot um, at uh, running for the Senate? I personally don't think so. Why? I think that. Uh, Oddly, the wisdom of the reapportionment worked, uh, and, and they solidified those three slots. Uh, she's moving up in seniority in the House. Uh, 24 should be a very good year for the Democrats at this stage to, to pontificate possibly retaking the majority in the House, which would position her. You spend a lot of time building seniority in the House, so I think she would like to take advantage of that. And I think her sample at, at the state race is uh, kind of that, that, that. And the Senate, yes, but I think she, she sees her role in the House. She's very effective in the House. Um, it, it will be interesting to watch, to say the least. Um, I always thank you for coming. It's thank you. always a fun conversation, my friend. Thank you. thank you. And we'll be right back. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mendham with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Mendham is CB steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Oh, what fun it is to win during the $100,000 Christmas giveaways at Tamarack Casino. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. See you on the next show.